What is going on everyone? As you can see, we are back home from our epic 5,000 mile road trip. Now the video you're about to watch is only the ground portion, so it's 1,500 miles, and then I'll be releasing the rest of the trip in a later time. Now before we move forward with the video, I'd like to apologize for the first few minutes, and that's because we started the trip at night, and the GoPro's quality at night is not the greatest. So bear with me because as the video goes on, the quality and resolution and everything else gets much better. So without further ado, let's start the strip. I began this trip by saying goodbye to the pups and to Cookie just about an hour before the sun rose. Throwing on my backpack and making sure it was all properly secured, I was off to my first destination, which would be my starting point, Bucky's. Now to be honest, I didn't need to start here since I've already filled up the day before. But if you know me, you know that how much I love Bucky's and I always start any adventure at one. So after I snapped a few pictures, we we're finally off on our way to San Diego. The first leg of the trip was honestly not exciting. If you know anything about West Texas, then you know it's basically the same scenery over and over. But I was okay with it since it was a perfect way for me to have a good shakedown test of the ground. Basically, for me to adjust anything that needed to be adjusted and to test different camera angles on the GoPro. And of course, to get mentally prepared for this long journey ahead. Alright, so we've been riding for roughly 5 hours and 20 minutes. So we'll just say 5 and a half hours. Oh, my ass hurts. <laughs> Hopefully this is still cold. Mm. Ah, it's freezing still. So in here is just liquid IV. Try and stay hydrated as possible. Yes, service here in West Texas has been in and out, but I didn't expect any else, so. This trip so far is not too bad. Like I said, my ass hurts a lot. I'm wearing some Dainese's. I think that's how you pronounce it, Dainese's? Dainese? Uh, riding pants. But there's no butt pads in these. I should have worn my um, bicycle padding, you know, for road biking. That would have been smarter, but honestly didn't think that far ahead. Hands-wise, actually not too bad. It cramped up here and there, but I'm not surprised at all. I could have had a throttle lock. I'll say right now the downfall of having a 125cc bike is that you're constantly getting passed by everyone. I'm averaging about 50 miles an hour, and most of the places that I've been riding through, it's been about 70, 75 miles an hour, and one lane. So I'm constantly get passed by trucks and everything, but I'm okay with it. So. so right now we're at a uh, just a picnic rest stop. Since I'm taking all side and back roads, I don't think I'm going to run into a traditional rest stop. So this would be the closest thing that I have to a rest stop is these picnic stops that I've been seeing every 20 miles or so. It's definitely getting hot. As you can see, the color of the piping has now turned rainbow. When I first bought this exhaust, this was actually the stainless steel color of this. And um, yeah, it looks pretty cool. It looks pretty badass. Um, but that just shows the extreme temp this little thing is working at. As far as my setup going right now, I have the GoPro in front and I just swap it back and forth. And then I have a pro taper bar, which I had that cushion thing, but I took it off because I realized that this was a perfect area to mount my phone mount. So that's been pretty good. I can. So that's how I've been charging my phone. Huge three-person tent. 
is the smallest tent we have at the house. Don't mind this binder clip. It does nothing. I don't know why, but I just put it there and then I totally forgot about it. <sighs> okay, well, I am gonna take a quick 15 minute power nap. I doubt I can, but I'm just going to because I promise all my loved ones that are very concerned about me doing this trip that uh, I would take naps and rest whenever I can. Even though I feel okay, I'm doing this for you guys. All right, yeah, I'm gonna go take a nap on this giant ass picnic table in the middle of nowhere. But yeah, I just want to call you, so I'm okay. Alright, break time's over. Let's get back on the road. Getting back on the road, I quickly realized that my gas mileage wasn't as I anticipated. Usually on the Grom, the gas light would turn on around 100 miles or so, but to my surprise, we were eating gas much quicker and the light came on at 70 miles. That's when I pulled over and tried to find the nearest gas station and realized it's not for another 40 miles, which meant I already had to use my emergency gas. But even after filling that up, I almost still ran out of gas. Alright, let's make sure that doesn't happen again. Gas is all done, let's get some food. <sighs> All right, we're finally getting some food. It is two o'clock, first meal of the day. Cheeseburger. Cheeseburger. McChicken. I'm a big fan of the McDonald's app. They have great deals, so all this was like $2. So, cheers. So let's talk about what just happened. I literally, when I opened up the tank, I saw just a little bit splashing around. Honestly, another mile, we probably would've been stranded. Also, I usually don't run my gas this low. I'm a big advocate of filling up every tank in half a tank, but um, there's just no gas stations out here, so. 300 more miles to go. I'm gonna try our best to get as close as possible to there, to the national park, um, but, if you can't make it, we'll just find a random campsite, camp for the night, and then uh, do it first thing in the morning. So I'm gonna finish up my check and then get back in the road. Right. Hopping back on the bike, I was greeted by the same scenery we've had for the past few hours. Brown fields, flat land, cows, lots of cows. But after passing all the cows, we finally made it to New Mexico. We have made it to another rest stop, and this time it's a real rest stop. Um, There's actually bathrooms and everything. It's not like the other picnic one that we went to. It is hot, but it's not bad at the same time. Definitely getting used to this. Yeah, when you're on the bike moving, everything is fine. I do feel the heat kind of beating on me, but it's not bad. It's honestly not bad. Great thing about how small this thing is is that I can tuck it away anywhere. <laughs> Still can't get over color change in the exhaust. Man, that got extremely hot. Looks cool, but yeah. <laughs> the Grom is still acting like a beast. Still no issues whatsoever. Knock on wood. I am enjoying being on the road on a motorcycle because your point of view of everything is completely different. You you can see your surroundings, look around. I literally see birds coming right next to me. Overall, I'm enjoying this trip a lot. It is taking a lot longer than I thought. Mostly because we're topping out the bike maybe at 60 max on a slight downhill, but I'm averaging about 50, 55. Um, I can basically do 55 if I wanted to the whole time. That's me like pinning the throttle and I don't wanna beat on the bike too much because uh, 
yeah, it has to make it all the way to California. So what I'm gonna do right now is rest a little bit and then we are technically still three hours away from where we need to go on just 63 miles. We can technically make it today, but I don't think I want to do that. That's a good thing about traveling by yourself is that uh, you're on your own schedule and your own time. And uh, the only person you're gonna disappoint is yourself for not uh, prepping or having itinerary or anything. But I'm completely okay with that. I like winging things, um, yeah. Nonetheless, I'm gonna go check up on the people that are keeping track of me, making sure I'm not dead, and then, um, go back on the road, so. Well, just as I assumed, it was gonna take a lot longer to get to White Sands. So as the sun was getting low, I managed to find myself in a small town in New Mexico called Artesia. I believe that's how it's pronounced. But nonetheless, after a quick Google search on the cheapest place to stay, I found a motel that reminded me of Bates Motel or any typical motel you see in horror movies. Alright, so unfortunately we can't make it to the campsite because I took way too long taking my time trying to get there and by the time we get there it'd be pitch black and I do not want to set up the tent or anything at night, especially with the bike and everything and being all loud. So I ended up just getting a motel here in Artesia. I think this place is Ar Artesia, New Mexico, something like that, it's a little small town. Let's do a quick tour. This is what 60 bucks gets you in Artesia, New Mexico. Hello. So we got a TV. We got a light that doesn't work. Full bed. Got a little mini fridge. Let's see if there's any goodies. Nope. Got a wall AC mount. And yeah. Honestly, for a motel, this actually doesn't look too bad. Hopefully these uh, bed sheets are okay, but it is what it is. Luckily, I am not a picky person at all. I just need a place to sleep. So that's what we're gonna do. So right now I'm just gonna unpack everything from the bike, bring it inside, and then uh, go find something to eat. So, pretty hungry, pretty hungry. All right, let's go get settled in. All right, so I think his name was Reese at Wendy's, but, oh shit, he really hooked me up. So I just got a sandwich. He got me fries. And nuggets so Reese if you're watching this appreciate it, brother we'll start with this first Ooh. after 12 hours of riding holy shit we got a chicken BLT we're currently chiming into Tyler's live stream of the throttle VIP but guess what I just got into the room <laughs> Uh, yeah, it barely fit through that door, but uh, everyone was yelling me to uh, bring it into the room if I was able to, and it just barely fit. So yeah, I guess I don't have to worry about uh, it being missing in the morning, so I guess I can sleep much easier. But uh, it is time to go to bed, and man, I really need a haircut. My hair is crazy. Alright, well, it's time to go to bed, so I'll see you guys tomorrow. The next day was another early morning as we had a lot of ground to cover. Pushing the bike out of the motel, I accidentally knocked one of my mirrors loose. But luckily, I brought some spare tools with me so I was able to quickly resolve that. Now these next few clips, I was sad to see that I had a dirty lens because the sunrise against the terrain was, let's just say, marvelous. If you ever experienced driving through sunrise alone on an empty open road, then you know the sense of feeling refreshed, relaxed, at peace. This feeling quickly went away as I realized the loss of performance on the ground. 
It went from comfortably cruising at 55 to 60 miles an hour to now struggling to hold 50 miles an hour in fourth gear as I realized we were gaining elevation fast. It was struggling so much I had to ride most of the next segment in third gear to have any sort of power, which meant I was about to get even worse gas mileage. And then that's when I realized we were entering the mountains. Now, before I continue the story, I'd like to stop for a second and let everyone know that I didn't do much planning on this trip. I barely looked up the route or bothered to zoom in on Google Maps. I didn't map out how far each gas station was or even how far each town was from one another. I just assumed that there was a town within 100 miles of each other and that my extra gas container, well, that would be more than enough. I trusted whatever route Google gave me with me setting the route to avoid highways and tolls. So it was to my surprise when I had to cut through a national forest. And well, a surprise it was. Once the Grom struggled to get near the peak, the elevation started to change downwards and finally for once on this trip, the Grom opened up and fell to life. Riding through the twisties, pretending like I was on a sport bike, breathing in the fresh cool air, I was enjoying what mother nature was gifting me on that morning. I was thinking how lucky I was to be in this position, to be given this opportunity to have this experience of this amazing ride and knowing that this is just a taste of what's yet to come. Once again, <laughs> we almost ran out of gas. This time we got 95 miles to this tank but it's been blinking for like 30 minutes. If it wasn't for going downhill, um, I don't think we would have made it. I really don't know, but uh, we got gas, we're getting gas. You can see right behind me, there's a bunch of white sand, and that's because we are in White Sands National Park. It's very, very peaceful out here. There's a decent amount of people though, but it's pretty spread out. It was freezing this morning. Like, I was really cold on the bike riding here, but now it's extremely hot. Good thing I got these knobby tires so we can uh, put the adventure ground to the test. So. I kind of already had one in the sand, off camera. Oh, that's a view, guys. You can see the mountains in the back. I called my mom earlier and she saw the mountains in the bag and she thought it was water. And we got the little Grammy down there. The little Grammy that could. Very, very proud of that thing. I'm really glad I bought this shirt. This is a fishing shirt. It has a built-in, uh, whatever this thing's called. It has this built-in. You can put your glasses on, be done with it. Or I can be smart and flip my hat around and use the visor, but we're not making good decisions today. But I do at least have sunscreen on, so we just have that. Well, I already did some walking around and all that jazz. I think my time here is done. Kind of wish I had a little thing to uh, slide down. What I see a lot of people doing. Yeah, I guess I could just slide on my ass. <laughs> Actually, hold on. I may regret this. <laughs> Why did I think that would work? <laughs> now I got a sandy ass. Ooh. All right. Ooh, 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 ooh. <sighs> well, everything is getting overheated, so I need to stop recording. Time to throw on some layers. If you guys aren't used to biking in the heat, it's actually good to have a lot of layers on because when you sweat, you produce a lot of water, obviously. And then when you start riding, it's like an AC. Honestly, I'm trying to sweat as much as possible right now. After playing the sand for a little and 
cruising around the park. I then took off once again and headed to my ne next stop, Arizona. Stopped at this little place over here where they only have one pump. I chuffed Food Mart. Let the bike cool down a little bit. Got some gas. It is hot up. Looks like uh, they have some issues with the car overheating. Good little place. Let's see what we got. Definitely need water. Oh. You want to have any loose ice to fill up a little water pack, would you? Uh, we do in the back if you want to do that. Scoop it right okay. in there. Cool. I appreciate it. How far is the next town going this way? Uh, Adamus and I'll be 30 miles. 30 miles? Cool. All right, they're nice enough to let me get some water. Let's do that. Yeah, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's not all my God. Oh, perfect. Yeah, this thing's still there. Cool. All right, man, I appreciate it. Holden freaked out on me. All right, man, I appreciate everything. How's it going, man? You too. Oh. With those people who are nice. And not bad for a place in the middle of nowhere. It's actually reasonably priced. This was only a dollar fifty. Alright, so we just got into Arizona and you're greeted with a storm. I just rode through a little bit of it and uh, got rain on, but not too bad. It actually felt very good since it's pretty hot out. So again, it feels like free AC and I'm already pretty dried because there's a good portion of it after where it wasn't raining. But I don't know if you can see there, but it looks like it's shifting that way. I wanted to check the, uh, the radar to see what's happening with the storm, but uh, we don't have any signal right now. Emergency calls only. So um, I just took some time to edit some photos. I I got some pretty good ones. Like, check out that one. Writing shot, selfie, yeah. Of course, typical selfie in front of the state lines. This was about 20 minutes ago. Quick reflection. New Mexico so far, second day, has been the best. Started off with riding through the mountains at sunrise, other than it was pretty chilly. And then we went to obviously White Sands National Park, which that was awesome. And then we had to go through the mountains again to get to here. And the back roads on a bike is like great. Like, I'm gonna keep saying it over and over. If you have the opportunity to ride your bike through the back country of any state, I'm assuming better on the west side, definitely do it. It's honestly quite an experience and ooh, ho, ho. <laughs> look like I almost lost my flip flop. Got one there, okay good, the other one's right there. I would have been sad. Oh, that's why this came undone. My sleeping bag actually isn't secure that well, to be honest. By my sleeping bag, I mean Jeremy's sleeping bag. And, and I don't mean sleeping bag, yeah, I mean tent. That should do it. And I apologize if it's really windy sound, because it's actually pretty windy out. Oh, and the great thing about riding in the backcountry, 
I had like no cars around me for like an hour. That was great. But let's see. Yeah. Look at that. Come on. Come on. Like, you can't do this on a regular highway. Well, I mean, you can do this on a regular highway, but you might get run over. This is honestly a great trip. I think this is uh, my first trip this far by myself. I usually have someone else with me, and this is for sure my longest trip on a motorcycle. Actually, do you even call the ground motorcycle? <laughs> Say it's like a scooter. Oh shit. You guys hear that? Cause I hear it. Woo! God is angry. This was a good little pit stop. That was fun. Bike probably enjoyed the uh, the cool weather or the cool water from the rain. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Feel sorry for that bug. But all right, let's get back on the road. We need to get to Tucson. Oh yeah, we shifted our uh, game plan. We're going to Tucson now, not Phoenix. It's a little closer. Spend the night there and then keep on pumping to San Diego after, so. All right, back on the road. So we got two problems. One, I lost my Adidas hat. Um, it flew off on the back roads when I was trying to dry out my jacket. I forgot that it was tucked in my jacket. So when I unzipped it, it just flew out. So there's that. And two, as you can see, when in another hotel motel and the Grom is inside, and it's not because we're trying to sleep. Well, I was gonna do this anyways, regardless. We kind of got a failed rear tire. So about 300 miles ago, when we were in New Mexico, um, I was at the gas station and the guy told me that my tires were low. And I was like, oh crap, he's completely right. And I said, thank you and everything. And I quickly looked for punctures and stuff and I didn't see any at all. Um, but I thought it was odd that both of them were low. So I was thinking that maybe it's from all the elevation change uh, from going to mountains and everything that it you know, deflated my tires a lot. So I pumped everything back up to around 35. I overinflated them a little bit, a little bit better fuel economy. I basically rode 300 miles all the way out to Arizona. And then um, the ground still rode perfectly fine. I saw a discount tire open. So I was like, yeah, I'll just get an air check really quick. Uh, they checked my front tire. It was still at 35. They checked my rear and it was at 14 PSI. And I was like, crap, there has to be a puncture. And so I had the guy look at it really quick. I already know that they don't work on motorcycles tires, but I just wanted him to just look at it. And uh, unfortunately, we found like six slits all the way down the tire, and they're all pretty consistent. So it looks like the tire failed on us. Um, let me show you. Right there. There's one there. There's another one right there. Another one right there. And it basically goes all the way down the tire. This is what I'm assuming is a slow leak. 
I looked all around the tire, I didn't see anything else. I was hoping that if it was a puncture, that it was like a nail or something, because I can easily just plug it. Um, but if that's really the case, the slits are basically giving us a slow leak, then fortunately we have to get a new tire. But all right, we're in Sierra Vista, Arizona, and luckily this is a very populated area. So it seems like there's a bunch of motorcycle and car places and shops all over. So first thing in the morning, I'm gonna contact a bunch of them and see if anyone can help me out. So we got Scottsdale Blonde from Huss Brewing. Let's see if it's any good. Cool. Smells like beer. Cheers. Mm. Woo. Oops, that was a little messy. Um, doesn't taste too bad. We got Subway. I was gonna go to an actual restaurant, but uh, I'm just exhausted. So I'm just gonna be a hermit and uh, stay in the hotel room. But we got foot long, but I'll just show you half. It's a meatball marinara with bell peppers, tomatoes, olives. <sighs> Fully loaded, so I'll get that in a second, but <sighs> oh, I love beer, especially after a long, long ride. Mm. To reflect on today, other than the tire issue, it was it was very, very enjoyable. The um, the whole ride, but White Sands was beautiful. First time I've been there and I definitely want to go back. From there, I decided to take the highway um, because I realized that the route was going, I had to go on the highway for a little bit because that was only the only way and then to get back on the back roads. But I said, you know what, screw it. Let's just take the highway. So I changed the route to take highway and then I was on the highway for about an hour and a half. But I realized how boring the highway was, even though I was going to get to my destination much quicker. I was like, ah. The whole point of this trip is to basically take the scenic route and take routes where you would not normally take. So I was like, you know what, let's go ahead. Even though it's gonna take me an extra two hours to get to my destination, so be it. So I changed the GPS back to avoid highways and tows. And then that's when I got to the gas station and that's when I found out that my tire was uh, low. So right then and there, I freaked out for a brief second. But when I didn't see any punctures at all, I was like, all right, we got really lucky. It just got low from the elevation changes from the mountains. And so we're good to go. Got to the Arizona sign, uh, the Arizona border, New Mexico border. We got greeted by rain. And it's funny because the rain here, well, I guess there's rain everywhere, but you literally see the cloud and you see the rain coming down. And uh, I was like, I looked behind me at New Mexico and it was sunny and clear. And I look at Arizona and it was just pouring rain. And I was like, mm, is this like Florida where it just passes in 10 minutes or am I gonna be stuck like this for a while? But yeah, that was my day. It was a lot of fun. And now I feel like tomorrow it's gonna be even more interesting and fun. This is basically gonna push everything, my schedule by like 10 hours, I think. So luckily we left the day early. I was planning again to California tomorrow night, but now it probably looks like Thursday late afternoon. Hopefully we get the situation fixed and uh, yeah. All right, well, I'm gonna finish this up. I'm gonna answer emails, texts, phone calls, everything, and um, get some good night rest. All right, well, Adventure Grom, Journey to Throttle, whatever you wanna call it, it resumes tomorrow.
All right, we have made it to, however you pronounce this thing. Uh, but they seem to be a Yamaha Honda dealership. So I get my little sun chip snacks and hopefully they can help me out, hopefully. And now it's daytime, you can see better, but yeah, we got that, we got that. And down there too. It doesn't look good, it doesn't look good. You say from Texas? Yeah, Dallas. Dallas. Yeah. Dallas to San Diego, huh? Yeah. Woo. Yeah, my ass hurts. <laughs> <laughs> Take a lot of stops. Yeah. yeah. Well, and the tank is only a one gallon tank, so. 75 miles or 80 miles a gallon? So at first I was getting around 75 and then magically it's going to 90 now. Oh, hey, yeah. good luck. Have a good tour. All right, hopefully you can help me out. I have that little Honda Grom right there. It just slits in the rear and I seem to be losing pressure. Okay. So hopefully you guys have something in stock. Go check with parts and see if we have something in stock. I'll see if I can squeeze in the schedule here. Okay. And then if they have something in stock, come back to me. Yeah, how's the schedule look too? Um, we are full, but Ugh. it looks like we have some no-shows this morning. I can't get a hold of some people. So. Okay. What's going on, guys? How's it going? Good. I have a 2020 Honda Grom. I was wondering if you had a tire for it, a rear tire. Really? And possibly front too. Right now I have some Max's all-terrain tires on them. Okay. Um, but I. I assume you may not have those, so if I could replace it, that'd be cool. If not, I may just swap a bow to just basically a street tire. I'm just trying to get to San Diego. Riding all the way to San Diego? Yeah, I, I came from Dallas. Man, that's not a, that's not a touring bike. No, not at all. Oh, I just cool. thought I just thought it'd be fun. <laughs> Why not? You're so. taking me into just like the frontage roads and yeah. all that? Yeah, I just did Google Maps, avoid highway, and it's been taking me all the back roads, frontage roads and everything. Cool. It's probably added like 10 hours at a time, but... Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but at least you're doing it. Yeah, you're exactly. You're doing something that most would be like, uh, no. So my front tire is fine, I think. So if anything, it's, it's my rear that I'm questioning. If I can get away with just doing the rear, that's fine. It's, it's already a little bit uncomfortable ride anyway, so I don't think it's going to be that much <laughs> different. Uh, well, we do have the monkeys, the ones that came off from the monkey. This is basically as close to what I have on right now. Yeah. Like that style, but. More of an adventure style. <laughs> uh, he seemed very helpful. I didn't get his name yet though, but I'll get it in a second. This place is massive. <sighs> Check this little thing out. What is this? I'm not sure. Should take that across country. <laughs> Wonder if there's any beer in this. Well, unfortunately, this is where we're about to lose some good quality footage. I purposely didn't pack my laptop with me to save on space, and I forgot to pack my extra SD cards for my good camera. I tried finding good quality SD cards locally, but was out of luck. So I had to resort to use my GoPro for the rest of the trip. All right, so a little update. I say that this is a failed rear tire, but the more I think about it and I look back up at all my old pictures, I think my tire pressure on the bike was actually pretty low to begin with. So that's basically my fault. I honestly forgot to check the tire pressure before I left home. And I basically rode five or 600 miles uh, before I realized the tire pressure was low. If you kind of look at the tire wear, you see, like that has been sitting on low tire pressure for a while. This is probably my own fault, but all the stress splitting the basically the knobs apart we have roughly 450 miles left so but while i was at the dealership i met a great guy named kavi he gave me a tour of his sweet taco and gave me lots of pointers on different routes to take but if you go this way right if you look at it you're trying to go here so there's not much difference between going up and down that yeah. going down and up all right, again, appreciate it, man. So Lower after road. saying our Bye. goodbyes for now and saying thank you to the guys at the dealership for replacing my tires in a timely fashion. This will be a new pull tab. Thanks, coaches. This area is very, very nice. The lady at the gas station just gave me this for free. So uh, what we're going to do right now is just chug this power rate, get some electrolytes, and uh, be on the road. I was back on my bike and making my way towards the Indian Reservation. This is when I quickly learned that Arizona's weather is very bipolar and not to trust a weather forecast. As it was supposed to be a clear day, 
but I was greeted by light rain that well later turned to one of the craziest experiences I've ever had on a bike. But before we get into that, Kavi was right. The Indian reservation route was amazing. Going up and down the hills and through some twisties, I was having a blast with my new rear tire. It was like New Mexico all over again, but better. But with all this fun, I kept my eyes on the dark clouds that seemed to get bigger and bigger. So big that I can clearly see how hard it was raining just miles ahead of me. That's when I made the decision to take shelter at a local gas station for just a little while and to get a snack while I waited out. Got my ham and cheese, a little pizza, and I love mayo, so mayo with the cheese. This one looks pretty bad. You see that road? It's exactly the way we have to go. So we'll let it sweep over it through, just like how the other one did. So I'm just gonna chill at this uh, bench for now, let the grom stay dry in case it does rain. I'm gonna go enjoy my food now. But after a good hour, I realized these big clouds kept forming and at this rate, I'd be waiting all day for the storm to pass. So I made the decision to just ride through it and hope for the best. Now once again, I'd like to pause for a second and apologize because what we're about to encounter messed up my GoPro and it basically corrupted most of my footage. Luckily, I have some footage off my phone that should be enough to paint the picture of what we went through, so back to the story. Magically, for the first hour of riding under the dark massive clouds, no rain. Maybe a few drops here and there, but nothing to really complain about. I thought I got lucky because as I was riding, I would look behind me and I can clearly see rain coming down not too far back. So I felt like I was riding just fast enough where I was beating the rain. But then I was quickly proven wrong. I was soaked. <laughs> The rain came down so hard, it felt like I was getting shot with pellets. But this wasn't my first rodeo in riding in the rain, so it wasn't that big of a deal. I was more concerned of my wet boots and how uncomfortable the ride was going to become because of my damp socks. But after 30 minutes or so of riding through the rain, I was greeted with the bright Arizona sun and within 20 minutes of air drying and 100 degree desert heat, I was fully dried minus my shoes. I went to enjoying the twisty Arizona back roads, being alone and having the same feeling I had in New Mexico, having a new moment with myself, the Grom, and well, nature. But once again, Mother Nature wanted to make my life more exciting as I was greeted by emergency signs saying that there is some road closure due to fires. So when I saw these giant cloud of smoke a few miles out, I assumed that was the fire. But Oh, how I was wrong. I quickly realized it was not a fire, but a sandstorm. Since I've never actually seen one in real life, I didn't know what to expect. This is my first time ever witnessing one, let alone be in the middle of one. My visibility at first wasn't bad, as I was able to see a good 50 to 75 feet in front of me. So because of that, I dropped my speed down to around 20 miles an hour or so, and I cautiously rode through the dusty clouds. But with a blink of an eye, the light dust turned to strong winds and thick sand and my visibility went from the 50 feet to barely 5 feet in front of me. And this is the scary part because at the last second, I saw blinking hazard lights in front of me and I swerved out of the way onto the gravel shoulder and just nearly rear-ending a car that was stopped in the middle of the road since they couldn't see for themselves. But again, to put this into perspective, the winds were so strong, sand getting everywhere, they were collecting in my boots, my gloves, and up my helmet. Luckily, I was wearing a shirt that had a built-in mask, so I was able to cover up my mouth and nose. And honestly, not able to do anything, I just stood there and just took it all in and just waiting until the worst had passed. But after a good 10 minutes or so, the visibility got a little bit better and I decided to fire up the Grom and slowly be on my way. 
After riding for a little bit, I was able to reach a gas station to top off my gas and shake off whatever sand I could. I felt like Mad Max, covered in sand and still in disbelief of what just happened. I was proud of myself for what I managed to overcome from that situation. By situations, I mean the high winds into a downpour that led to my first and hopefully last sand, dust, or whatever you call it, storm. But uh, I wish the order of each event was flipped because now I wish there was rain to wash myself and the ground. But I accepted for what just happened and I hopped back on my bike and rode the next few hours until I ran out of daylight. I stopped at the first hotel I could find, took a long shower, and rested for the night. I would help you. I don't know who you belong to. The next day was another early morning as I didn't waste any time at all and rode to Yuma, Arizona, which was roughly about a 40 minute ride from the hotel. Once I made it to a gas station and filled up, I realized I could take a detour through Mexico and pop back into California. So I went on Instagram to let my followers decide my fate. Do I take the safe and boring route to California and end the trip that way? Or do I take an unknown route through Mexico? Well, it's a 50-50 split and I headed my way to Mexico. And luckily, I had my passport card on me, so that also wasn't going to be an issue. Approaching the border to Mexico, I was greeted with many signs saying, last chance, turn around, and 5,000 feet, 4,000 feet, you get the picture. But as those numbers became lower and lower, this is when I started to second guess my decision. Since I knew Mexico was on high alert for carjackings and kidnappings, and once I pulled up to the border and waited in line to cross over, it was more apparent that I should turn around. There were many people roaming around on the US side, either homeless, looking drugged out, or begging for money. There was barbed wire everywhere, and honestly, it seemed like a scene out of a war movie. When I was pulling up to the gate, the border patrol asked me why I was entering Mexico. And when I told him I was just passing through to cut into California, he looked pretty puzzled and confused and said the highway I just came from was probably a better option. But when I told him how slow my bike was, and that this route seemed more interesting, he literally laughed out loud and just said, welcome to Mexico and flagged me in. It went from a depressing scene out of a movie to something like Mardi Gras. There was a bunch of people partying, drinking, shopping, but at the same time, you sense people just watching you. You see the federales on their Humvees with their machine guns and the locals just staring you down, feeling not welcome. But surprisingly, this is the least of my concern. Almost immediately upon crossing over the border, my Google Maps app decided to go black and now I didn't know where to go. All my other apps were loading just fine, but only map related apps stopped working. I didn't want to close out the app and restart it since I had limited cell service and when I tried to load the Waze app as well, that didn't work either. Luckily I can still hear the turn by turn directions through my headphones, but the metrics changed from miles to kilometers. So basically, I had to guess my way all the way back to the other end of the border. And while I was guessing my way through the streets of Mexico, I ended up finding a bunch of cars with California and Arizona plates and the direction they were going seemed to be the same that Google was telling me. So I reluctantly followed them for a good hour or so and with sheer luck, it brought me to the border. I waited in line and once I got up to the border patrol, just like how I entered the country, they asked me what I was doing in Mexico. Well, I told him exactly the same thing I told the other guy, how I came from Dallas and going all the way to California and I thought it was a great idea to cut through Mexico and all that jazz and he laughed at me, said I was crazy, but he waved me right through without giving me any troubles and said, good luck. <laughs> but now at this point, we finally made it to California and I was greeted with California gas prices. But even though I made it to California, I still had roughly a two hour ride left to get to San Diego. So we were just in the home stretch of this adventure. Now I had another option to continue to take the long scenic routes and go through mountains and everything and all that jazz, or just take the highway and get to San Diego. 
Well, I end up taking Highway 8 since after everything that happened, I thought it'd be better to get to San Diego as quickly as possible. After riding the highway for about 30 minutes, I realized that I wasn't legally allowed to be on the road. I kept seeing signs saying no motorcycles, no bicycles were allowed on the highway. And because of all these signs, it got me very paranoid because every cop that passed me, I assumed I was going to get pulled over. But I don't know if it was just luck or that the state troopers saw that my license plate saying Texas, but no one ever pulled me over, so I'll just leave it at that. Now this last leg to get into San Diego, I still had to go through mountains, but it's nothing crazy like the Indian reservations. Going through the mountains to enter San Diego was a good fitting to the end. It tied the entire trip all together, and I was relieved that after three and a half days to finally make it. That was until I actually got into San Diego and I was greeted by all the crazy drivers. Honestly, the last 20 minutes of me trying to reach my destination was more intense than the sandstorm or riding through Mexico. But after white knuckling my way through the expressway, I safely made it to where I was staying for the night and was greeted by my buddy Jeremy who flew in that morning from Dallas to meet me at the finish line and we celebrated by having a cold one off the pier. Now some of you may be wondering, how am I going to get back home? Well that's another whole big journey so make sure you subscribe and hit that bell to be notified when that video is released. But I hope you enjoyed this epic 1500 mile ground trip because I sure hell did. And would I do it again? Hell yes.